Hi. Hey, I just had a wonderful thing happen to me. After all these years, the member of our technical crew have made me an honorary member of the technical crew, and I feel highly honored by this. And so tonight, I not only get to introduce the panel the way I always do, I get to take their pictures while I'm doing it. I never tried this before, so <clears throat> if you want to tune another station, it'll take me a minute. <laughs> uh, first of all, here is, here is our panel. There's Bill Cullen. Bill Cullen, and next to... Uh, to Next, there, there, there's Bet, Betsy Palmer. Oh, no, back, back. And there's, 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 there's Henry Morgan. And there's Bess Myerson. Now, wait a minute now, wait a minute now. I can give you a shot that shows you the whole thing. There you see before, isn't this done skillfully? There you see before your very eyes the panel of I've Got a Secret. <laughs> Get a Secret, brought to you tonight by... The new Polaroid automatic camera for finished pictures in 10 seconds. Now, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have met the members of our charming, if somewhat warm, panel. It is a miserable night in New York City, but we hope we can make it happy for you. And here, by introducing, please, our first contestants. Hi there. How are you? Hi, Ben. Hello. How are you? All right, let's all get seated and get real close to each other. That's fine. Now, let's find out who these delightful creatures are. What is your name, honey? Jane Hoberman. Jane Hoberman of? New York. Um, Fresh Meadows, isn't it? Fresh Meadows, Long Island. Ah, that's right. It's a good thing you remembered. You couldn't get home tonight if you didn't remember where you lived, could you? And uh, the young lady here on the other side? Pamela Hutchings. Pamela, where are you from? By the, um, New York. From New York? Uh, don't give away any secrets. All right, young, strapping young fellow? Frankie Corrado. Frankie Corrado from? New York City. All right. Now, youngsters, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. And here we go. to help you classify the secret, the clue concerns something that happened to these youngsters. And Bill Cullen, we'll start with you, please. Something that happened. Was it a... Well, let me see. We got Jane, Pamela, and Frankie. Jane, was it uh, something good? Yes. Pamela... You'd have been in awful shape without it. <laughs> Pamela, was it a physical thing? Like, did... Uh... Yeah, was it a physical thing, Pamela? Yes. And Frankie... Did it affect all of you at exactly the same time? Did it happen to all of you at exactly the same time? No. Now, when he says not the same time, uh, he means the precise, not the exact precise moment. Can I... He's playing uh, it very cagey. Okay, well, can I uh, go along in on the basis that it did happen to all of you at about the same time? About the same time. Okay, thank you. Okay. $20 down, $60 to go. We'll go, please, oh. to Betsy. Pamela, yeah. does it have to do with your age? Yes. Ooh, good tissue. Frankie, does it have to do with your age like about six years ago? No. Seven, eight years ago? No. No? Did it have to do, Janie, when you were born? Yes. It did. Did it have to do that you were all born at the same time? Yes. Well, now, we say same time again, not the, the same exact... Day. Same I day. Yes. The same, same day. Same day. And... All right. Hold it, Bill. Bill, if Bill just got the idea. It's too late. We're going out of Henry Morgan having lost $40. Henry, I think you're the only one on the panel now who doesn't know. Uh, I think I got it. Oh, you have got it? I think. You... <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go back to Henry. We can't do that to him. Henry, what were you going to say? Well, if you're going to be nice to me, it must be our birthday, and they must have been born on it. That's exactly what it was. They may look young to a lot of people, but they look awful old to me, I'll tell you that, when I realized that they were born the very same, on the same day, actually June 19th, 1952, and this is I've Got a Secrets Tonight, is I've Got a Secrets 10th Anniversary. And 10 years ago, when these children opened their mouths to let out their very first big yelp, I was opening my mouth for the first time to say good evening and welcome to I've Got a Secret. 
Little could I have imagined that I was going to get to say it 489 times, which I have up until now. And Pamela and Jane and Frankie are proof of what can happen in 10 years. Um, I feel that their parents have somehow accomplished more than we have. Uh, how's it feel to be old, Frank? Okay. You don't mind being an old man? Well, that's the way to do. Smile at the years. I want to mention that we did intend to have one other birthday child with us. Betsy Palmer's husband gave us the name of Rosemary Turco of Mount Vernon, New York. And Rosemary was all set to come down and be part of our show, but the poor child, she got tonsillitis and she couldn't come. So, Rosemary, dear, happy birthday to you tomorrow. We're going to send you a present. The present will be sent to your house, and these youngsters will get their presents backstage. Thank you, and happy birthday to us all. <laughs> now, it being our anniversary, it's always happy to welcome back old friends. Our next contestant is a former stagehand on our show, and he left us to become a professional magician. And I'm happy to report that he's doing just great, as you will see in a moment. Here is Lon Masterson. Welcome home. Now, panel, Lon is going to demonstrate a trick, a new trick that he has perfected, and we're going to need a volunteer. Anybody who will volunteer whose name happens to be Henry Morgan. Henry, you have just volunteered. Would you come up here and volunteer, please? I recommend that you remove your jacket and your shoes. Um... Yeah, I'll leave him over there with the ladies and bring him over, and then uh, take your shoes off, paddle over here. And uh, with a little help, would you mount this ladder and get inside the capsule, please? <laughs> this is your life, Scott Carpenter. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> All right. Didn't this program start like this? Yeah, I used to do these bits, you know, then I got too fat to get in the capsule, so oh. there you go. Now, just, just stand right where you are. And Henry, you should be very flattered. <laughs> Because Lon specifically requested that you help him with this trick, and don't worry about a thing because you're, we're, we're not going to keep you in suspense about what we're going to do to you. Lon will whisper his secret directly to Henry. At the same time, we'll show it to the folks at home. Well, the clue to Lon's secret concerns something that's going to happen. We'll start the game with Bill Cullen, please. Is this, uh, uh, Lon, this thing is going to happen, will it give most of the audience great pleasure? I think so. Uh, will something physical happen to Henry? Yes, yes. Will it give Henry great pleasure, assuming Henry experienced great pleasure like anyone else? I hope I mean, Henry will come out smiling. Good, good. He's not going in smiling, I'll tell you. <laughs> I think he'll come out smiling. One question that won't help get the answer, but I'm curious, is it hot in there? Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Are you going to make Henry disappear? Mm, for a while. All right. Oh, boy. Are you going to bring him back? For a while. <laughs> you'll, you'll bring him back, yes. Will Henry be in the same shape when he returns as he is now? I hope so. Everything works, yes. All right, we've lost 20. We have 60 to go. We go, please, to Betsy. Henry, are you afraid? <laughs> Uh, I'm a little too I stupid mean, really, to be a... Huh? For really, are you? No, because, uh, I figure they wouldn't kill me on the air. They're cowards. No. <laughs> is it something that uh, is going to happen right inside of that capsule, Lon? Part, Part of it. Part of it? Uh, is it something that will happen to the lower half of Henry instead of the upper half? No. It'll happen to the whole Henry. The whole Henry. <laughs> will it happen, um... While we're still on the show? Or oh, are yes. you going to take him away until yes. next week? Oh, no, this will all be done before your very eyes. $40 down and $40 to go and best. Because Henry is busy and can't be used as a questioner, your questions will be worth $40. Fine. Lon, uh, are you going to use any other apparatus besides what you have on the stage? A little bit. Mm hmm And is this going to be lifted from the floor? No. I didn't imagine so. Not with Henry. <laughs> is anyone else... <laughs> No offense. Is anyone else going to participate besides the two of you? Yes. All right, we've lost the $80. And panel, because there is a feat of magic involved here, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen. I don't want to spoil the surprise. But first, let's turn it around so you can see that there, it's, it's the same all the way around, no matter how you turn it. And it's going to happen right out here on the stage. Now, Henry, I cannot watch... To, With a cannot, nice breeze. <laughs> I can't bear to watch a grown man suffer. Would you sit down and make yourself comfortable? Get way down inside the thing there. Bye, Henry. That's a boy. There you go. All right. Oh, that looks so comfy. Now, 
Friends, it's traditional on anniversary shows for the host to thank all the people who have made the show possible. I would like to take a few minutes now to let you meet some of the members of our staff and our backstage crew. In the interest of time and Henry's good nature, please hold your applause until we've introduced them all. First, there's Roger Peterson, our associate producer. Hello, Roger. There you go. Happy anniversary, Henry. And following Roger is Rosalie Brown, our wardrobe mistress, affectionately known as Ducky. And Ducky, you look very pretty tonight. Oh, that looks so cool. He's going to be so happy in there. And after uh, Ducky comes Pat McCormick of our production staff. There you go. Don't worry, we'll ring him out after this whole thing is over. Swallow hard, Henry. <laughs> and after that comes Ray Bowden, our uh, studio guard. Ray, thank you very much. And there he goes. Just tread water, Henry. Tread water. Help is on the way. And he is followed by Judy Crichton of our production staff. And of course, oh boy, look at that. Every theater must have its theater manager. We have Guy Alexander, and we're happy. Hi, Guy. Hi, Gary. And... <laughs> and now next is Irma Reichert of our production staff. Hi, Irma. Hi, <laughs> and a gentleman with whom I've been associated for a number of years, I'm happy to say, our teleprompter operator, Mr. Bob Anderson. Hey, old Robert. Robert. There he is. <laughs> yes. And Diane Hoffacker of our production staff. Hi, Diane. And finally, we have June Gossett of our makeup department. Hi, June. Aren't you look cute? Had her hair, off. Had her hair done. <laughs> All right, June Bug, thank you very much. Well, what happens next? Well, Gary, we're going to see if we can make. Henry come out smiling. See if you can make him come out smiling. All right. There you go. A few magical passes. And Henry, come out smiling. Oh, well, smiling? <laughs> and dry. Smiling and dry. Look at the ladder. There you are. Oh, boy. Henry, wasn't it, uh, wasn't it terribly crowded in there? No, uh, I didn't think so, uh, did it? Did you think so? <laughs> he did come out smiling, and for good reason. And Henry, I do want to thank you again. That's all right. I, I want to thank you, too. Uh, would you uh, thank you. <laughs> It wasn't crowded in there, was it? Oh, no. well, one it was one final thank you to you, Henry. Thank very, you. very much. And thank you very much. That's very <laughs> oh, <boy>. <coughs> Henry, you look warm and somewhat soiled. <laughs> I was just a little nervous of meeting new people. <laughs> You know, usually I get to do those bits, but because of my sore hand, I, I, I wasn't able to make it into the barrel. Should I take a second to talk about that, just to, so we won't have so much mail? You people have been very kind. You've noticed that I have shaking hands with my left hand. Uh, one columnist wrote he thought I was going to Hollywood because I was shaking left-handed with everybody. It's simply that I had an operation on my hand some, oh, three months ago, and it takes a long while for it to clear up, and the one thing that I cannot afford to do is shake hands because I can't control how hard the other person's going to squeeze it. But it doesn't hurt, and don't worry about it, and thank you for your concern. All right. Now, we will meet some other members of our crew in what I promise will be a most fascinating way, I think. But first, let's watch this. Oh, I wish you could be with me right here. This is the coolest spot in New York City. This is our control room. And the gentlemen you see surrounding me are some of the technicians who are responsible for getting our show out of our studio and into your homes, onto your screen each week. The man in charge here is our director, Franklin Heller. Frank, will you turn around and uh, smile to people? There you go. Now, Frank watches everything that goes on on the stage through the eyes of three cameras, which he places and which he directs. And depending upon what's happening on stage, Frank decides which picture to send out over the air. 
So, Frank, will you show us what our three cameras are looking at now? Sure. <clears throat> uh, take two, Bert. Now, there's our regular four-shot of the panel. <laughs> and that is my empty desk where I would be if I were not here in the control room. All right, and, and take one. Take one, and that is our youthful producer, Mr. Chester Feldman. Uh, Gary. Yes, yes Frank. Uh, look, here's our telephone. Yeah? Uh, hey. Talk to Chester. Oh, talk to Chester? Hello, Chester. Take one. Happy 10th anniversary. Pick up the phone, Chester. Pick, pick up the phone, Chester, because we got you hooked in. Happy 10th anniversary. Thank you, and the same to you. Uh, 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 Chester? Yes? You know, there are lots of times when in Berkeley, the show runs short, you know, and you always yell up to me and you say, hey, Gary, fill a minute. <laughs> Chester, we're running short. Will you fill a minute, please? Goodbye. <laughs> Chester, you're on. Go on. Take two. <laughs> Come on, fill it. <laughs> All right, Chester, thanks very much for everything, my friend. Now, where are we? Now we're cut back to the control room. We'll meet some of the other gentlemen in here. This is our associate director, Al Miffalo, and his job, as his title implies, is to help Frank Heller, and he also uh, uh, directs our live commercials. You want to turn around there? There you go, there's Al. The man seated to the left of Frank Heller is our technical director, Vernon Gamble. Now, when our director says, take one, that means that he wants the audience at home to see what camera one is looking at, and then Vernon Gamble is the man who actually pushes the button to get that picture on the air. He also handles many special effects like, um, well, let's try a dissolve, shall we? That is a dissolve. Now we will do a wipe. You wipe back in there. There you go. There are millions of things he can do with that complicated board. Now the next gentleman is Ralph Holmes, our lighting director on this show. Will you uh, turn around there? There you go. Now, by the way, there are some 300 lights all strategically positioned around the stage by Ralph to uh, make the panel and me look um, passable. And uh, in the case of the gentleman, it takes 300 lights, too. Now, the gentleman to my left is Jay Fairman, our audio engineer, and he is in charge of placing all the mics around the stage. You want to turn over there and Jay, let him see you? He sees to it that you hear everything that's going on. And if you think that's easy, he is currently sitting in front of a console watching and adjusting 24 different dials. Now, there's one other person that I must not overlook, and that is our video engineer, Jim Angeromi, and he is in a little room below the control room. Now, Jim maintains the qualities of the pictures that you receive at home, and he's a terribly important man because without him, the picture might look, well, like this. There are all sorts of horrible things that could happen if he didn't know exactly what he's doing. Now, uh, Frank, uh, can you get one of the cameras backstage so we can get pictures of some of our stage hands right. in their natural habitat? Right, Gary, we're almost ready. Cass, you ready? Take two, please, Vern. All right, Cass, pan over to the pin rail, please. There we are. Cass. Now, that's Dick Gorda, our head carpenter, and John Alex standing at the pin rail. And they are in charge of all the scenery on the show. Now, those ropes that you see raise and lower the, all the curtains on stage uh, and other pieces of suspended the scenery. Board, Cass. Now, Frank, will you give us the shot of the switchboard? There we go. And there is Johnny Brennan, our chief electrician, and Jay Brennan. And they are at the switchboard that controls all of the lights in our studio. Now the piano cast. Now let's get a shot of our property man. There we go. There is Joe Mullen, our head property man. Joe, you wave at the camera, please. There's, there's Joe. He's in the white shirt. And next to him is Bernie Rodkin. And they take care of all of the movable props on the all show, right, Don, the like way. this piano, and the drums, which they're about to move into position. The the gentleman wearing the earphones is Don Darcy, our stage manager, whose job it is to see that things run as smoothly as possible backstage. And here you see him at that job. And several times these changes during our show must be made in matters of split, split seconds. And so it really takes a high, de high degree of skill. Now before I go back on stage, I would like you to meet uh, the three men behind the cameras who have been taking all of these pictures tonight. They are Hans Singer, Cass Gaylord, and Stan Gould. Ready, Frank, can I see the gentleman? Take one. Ready, three. Take three. Ready, two. Take two. And, and there they are. Well, Frank and gentlemen, thank you for... A, I hate to leave. It's so cool in here. It's miserable out there. Forget the rest of the show. Let's stay. One outside the door. <laughs> no, I've got to leave you because I want you to meet two other gentlemen who are associated with our show. Now, this is Leon Mumford, who is the porter here at Studio 52. Leon, will you follow up on the stage with me, please? 
You know, there are five other television shows that originate from this particular studio. If you want to know what all the technicians and stagehands do in between shows and during rehearsal breaks, I'll tell you. They go off to a corner and they listen to Leon Mumford play the piano. And many times, the other gentleman in our shot here, Mike Fitzgerald, comes over and joins him. He's obviously of our electrical department. And he plays a very mean harmonica. And uh, we have a ball sitting around listening to Leon and Fitz playing together. So, fellas, let's, uh, let's go on over. And they have, been, they have been kind enough to invite me to join them on drums. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> All right, uh, and I'll make like uh, Lawrence Welk now. And I'll give you the tempo. Oops. Fellas, I just broke the bass drum pedal. Glad to. Can somebody come fix it? Because I can't go boom if I don't. Oh, I got it. I got it. All right. So, here we go. And so, let's go like the one and the two and the one, two, three. places because we'll be back with you very very shortly um as i said earlier in the show to those three youngsters out here 10 years is a lifetime uh, it doesn't seem to me like 10 years since i've got a secret uh, first started i think we ought to check out and see who we are in the order of seniority as far as being panel members bill weren't you uh, first on the on the show i wasn't on the original i was on the third week the, the third, third week and you've been on ever since yeah now, Henry, I think you came on next, right? Yeah, I guess about the third month, something like that. Yeah. And then uh, it would be Betsy? Well, would I be... think, yes, and off and on, I was on for about seven years, and I think four years regularly. Four years as a regular, yeah. and Bess, you were on many times off yes. and on, but you started as a regular I'm the youngest. About what? I'm the youngest. <laughs> yes. You're the youngest, younger than springtime. That's exactly it. Just about three years, I think. Three, three yeah, years. Yeah, but yeah. she's learning, guys. <laughs> but it's been marvelous, and I would like to take the extra minute that we have to do something that I do before every show. Nothing would have been possible, of course, without our audience. I was... We usually have a little question and answer period. Has anybody got any questions about anything you've seen tonight? Anything at all I can answer for you? Raise your hand, I'll call on you, and don't be bashful just because it's on television. Anybody at all got, got any questions you want to answer? Yo, Chester Feldman, you have a question? I gotta get off in 30 minutes. What? I gotta get off in 30 seconds. I gotta get off in 30 minutes. That's it. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you all very much. It is traditional, of course, to thank the members of the cast and the members of the backstage crew who have made a show possible. It's nice that we can say that these people have not only made our show possible, they have made it more than pleasant. 
And so, Norman Paris, we'll throw it back to you and to Leon and to Fitz, and let's go and rock us off at the blues, huh? This is George Chandler. Can't milk a cow without a bucket. Can't see Ichabod and me without tuning in tomorrow on most of these stations. Secret has been brought to you tonight by... The new Polaroid automatic camera for finished pictures in 10 seconds. The preceding program was pre-recorded. This is John Cannon speaking.